This is a video to support a course that I'm teaching in introductory proof writing. And here we're going to look at a little bit of a twist on an inductive proof. And it's somewhat of a combination of induction with contrapositive or contradiction, depending on how you write it exactly. Okay, so let's say you want to prove a general statement that you might prove with induction, like for all natural numbers n, we have p of n is true, where p of n is some mathematical statement depending on n, where that's a natural number. So the proof will have the following outline. You'll start off with the base case, just like a normal inductive proof, and that is you'll establish the truth of p of 1. And so generally, that's pretty simple to check. And then you're going to make this minimality assumption. So remember, we're assuming that not for all n and n we have p of n. In other words, there exists some natural number where this is not true. So that's built into this outline of the proof. So you want to let k bigger than 1 be the minimum such that not p of k. So if there exists a place where this is false, then there exists a minimum place where this is false. And then you're going to do a downward induction. So you'll prove that not p of k implies not p of k minus 1. But notice, if not p of k minus 1, then that contradicts the minimality of this k. But that means we're done, and we have proved the statement. Another way of thinking about this is that not p of k will imply not p of k minus 1 will imply not p of k minus 2 all the way down to not p of 1. But we establish the truth of p of 1 up here. So we have p of 1 and not p of 1, which again is a contradiction. So let's jump into our example. We want to show for all n natural numbers, 6 divides 7 to the n minus 1. So you could obviously do this with regular induction. You could actually do this with some sort of factoring of 7 to the n minus 1 pretty easily, but we're going to practice this method of induction here. Okay, so let's start with our base case. And just like happens a lot of the time, the base case is going to be totally trivial. So what we want to notice is that if n equals 1, we have 6 divides 7 minus 1. Well, 7 minus 1 is equal to 6, so we're good to go there. Now we're going to do this minimality assumption. So let's let k, which is a natural number bigger than 1, be the minimum such that 6 does not divide 7 to the k minus 1. Maybe we could a little bit talk about why there should be a minimum. And that's because we are assuming that this is a non-empty set of natural numbers. By the well-ordering principle, every non-empty set of natural numbers has a minimum element. Okay, great. So now here's what we'll do. Let's go ahead and write 7 to the k minus 1 as 6 times a plus r, where r is some number between 0 and 6. So in other words, we're using the division algorithm with 7 to the k minus 1 and 6. Furthermore, because 6 does not divide 7 to the k minus 1 by our minimality assumption, we know that this r has to be strictly bigger than 0. So that's going to be important. Okay, so next what we'll do is use the division algorithm again with 6 and the previous case, which is 7 to the k minus 1 minus 1. So that allows us to write 7 to the k minus 1 minus 1 as 6 times q plus, I'll call it r prime, where 0 is less than or equal to r prime, which is less than 6. And here, r prime could be equal to 0. Of course, we want to show that it is not equal to 0, but a priori, we don't know that is the case. OK, so next what we'll do is multiply both sides of this equation by 7 in order to get a 7 to the k into this action so that we can maybe apply our induction hypothesis. So let's see what we get after doing that. That'll give us 7 to the k minus 7 
equals, so we can write this as 42Q plus 7R prime like that. So we don't really know how to deal with 7 to the K minus 7, but we do know how to deal with 7 to the K minus 1. So let's rewrite this so that we have a 7 to the K minus 1. We can do that very easily by adding 6 to both sides. So adding 6 to both sides here gives us 7 to the K minus 1 equals 42Q plus 6. Then I'm going to take a 6R prime off of this plus 6r prime plus r prime. Why will I do that? Well, I'm gonna do that just so that I can factor a six out of a bunch of stuff. So notice that gives us seven to the k minus one equals six times the quantity seven q plus r prime plus one and then a plus r prime outside like this. So next, we know something about the division algorithm that gives us a unique quotient and remainder. Notice that that means that this thing underlined here is equal to this thing underlined here, A. But that also means more importantly that this R underlined here is equal to this R prime underlined here. And that's because those are two different ways of expressing 7 to the k minus 1 via the division algorithm with quotient and remainder. So let's kind of summarize that. We have r prime equals r, but notice we have our assumption that r is not equal to 0 because 6 does not divide 7 to the k minus 1. So the fact that r prime is not 0 up into this equation tells us that 6 does not divide 7 to the k minus 1 minus 1. Okay, so again, that's because we have quotient remainder of 7 to the k minus 1 minus 1 with a non-zero remainder. Okay, good, but that contradicts the minimality of our k because we found a smaller object which is not divisible by 6, and that finishes this proof. And that's a good place to stop.